Hi, my name is Mitch Mitchell. I usually say that at the end of a video, but I decided to start it with this one this time. And this is day number eight in a row of me doing a video a day in April. And I want to ask, if you're new, if you like this, or you looked at some of the others, why not think about subscribing and then click on that little bell, which will let you know whenever I post a new video. Of course, you might want to wait till May because if you do it now, you're going to be getting <laughs> that sucker every single day for the rest of the month. So today, I want to talk about SEO. I used to own my own SEO company. It was part of the corporation that I have because I'm incorporated. And I you know, don't do that anymore because it just got tiring. It got tiring because a lot of the advice that people are given is bad advice. It's, it's either untrue or it's not explained well enough to make it worth anyone's while. I am pretty good at keywords, but you know, some people just don't really get it. They think you got to do all these other kind of things. And then when it gets really rough, they start trying to get you to pull back. So I'm going to talk about four rules that people have talked about as it applies to SEO, where they're saying you shouldn't do this. This is a bad thing. And I'm going to tell you why it's not a bad thing, but what they probably actually mean. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this thing where they're saying anchor text links are bad. Now, what's an anchor text link? In essence, if you have an article that you're writing and you say something like red Nike shoes, you just throw that out there, and you link to red Nike shoes, but your link has nothing to do with red Nike shoes, that's a bad thing <laughs> because it's misleading. In essence, what the search engines are saying is you're trying to trick us. Red Nike shoes must be something that you really want to talk about elsewhere, but you're linking to something else. Or if all you link to in every single thing is red Nike shoes, for instance, maybe you link to that exact same thing seven or ten times in an article, search engines also don't like that. However, if you're writing a blog post and you had a previous blog post or a Maybe you found an article that you want to link to and you put in the anchor text that matches not only what they put in, but also the topic you're writing about. That's legitimate. There is nothing wrong with anchor text lists. As a matter of fact, on my business website, I link to this one particular phrase, which is something that I do in healthcare. And I'm in the top five in the world. Well, I don't know if the whole world, but at least in the United States, I'm in the top five for that search term. As a matter of fact, I'm actually in the top two because three of those are job sites. So that's pretty cool. And I link to that text. When I write articles on that particular thing, I link back to other articles and I use that exact text and they're not penalizing me. Search engines don't penalize me. By the way, I'm in the top two on Google. On the other sites, I'm number one. Yeah. So Anchor text links are bad is false. Number two, comment links on blog posts can hurt your website. That's not totally true. The stuff that's bad are those, well, let's fake it, the spam comments, the fake comments, all that kind of stuff. And depending on what the link is, some of those are bad. For instance, way back in the day, there was someone who was writing some pretty good comments, but it was linking to some kind of sex site. <laughs> that took me at least a little bit of time to figure out that's what it was because I didn't click on all sites back then. And now I do before I let something go. If I don't know who you are, I'm going to click on it. But back then I didn't. Now that would have been bad because those kind of sites are, you know, they're kind of banned on search engines. And I say kind of because if you go in and you actually search for that, they will show you that. But if you're searching for just a general term, they probably won't. I mean, that's just how it is. So if you have all these comments on your site that have nothing to do with what you're talking about, then that's kind of bad. And, you know, spam comments, I say to people all the time, look, there's two ways to tell. One it's a spam comment if it doesn't specifically address something that's in the article, which is really easy to tell. I delete tons of comments because they don't talk about anything that's in the article. And another way you do it is you see basically what they have to say. So, for instance, there are certain phrases that you get all the time. 
if someone calls you webmaster, it's a spam comment. If someone says, your article was great, thank you, I'm going to subscribe, it's a spam comment. If you're not really sure, take a small portion of it, put it in a search engine between quotation marks, and if you find that exact same phrase a bunch of times, it's spam. So those kind of comment links are bad, and it's dodgy. And I'm one of those people who, if I'm visiting a blog, and I'm even thinking about leaving a comment on it, and I see some bad comments that I know are fake, I will tell the owner it's a, those are fake comments. If they leave them there, you know what? That's on them. But that's what they actually mean. They don't mean everyone else's comments. If I'm commenting on your article, I'm going to comment on the article. Now, I may link to my business site. I may link to my I'm Just Sharing site. I have five blogs, really. Come on. But I'm commenting directly on the article. I'm going to mention something so you know, oh, geez, you know what? This guy read the article. There you go. Number three, links in your guest posts back to your blog are damaging you. So some years back on my finance blog, I was accepting guest posts. And people were linking back to the sites. And it was my finance blog, so every article was on finance. We were all good. Everything was good. Then Google started penalizing some of these link farms for, for like sending these articles out or sending these links and ended up being on tons of sites. Now they're scrambling. And they started writing all these people, including me, asking us to remove the links. I refused to do it, although had I been in a different mind, I would have loved to just remove them all. But I didn't want to do it because I accepted so many guest posts. It's like, oh my God, everyone's writing me. So I said, okay, I'll remove it if you pay me for it. <laughs> they didn't like that. So now, what it did is it gave them something they can send to Google saying, well, so-and-so wouldn't remove it. And they thought that was going to threaten me. No, that, pff, they didn't have any power over me. You know, I do what I want to do. But... If you wrote an article that actually pertains to the topic and you put a link back to your site, there's no problem. It's if you're overdoing it and, you know, search engines know when you're overdoing it, that's when you get into trouble. So other than that, if it's on topic, it might not even be on topic. For instance, I've had on my I'm Just Sharing blog, I think, 16 guest posts. And those folks link back to their sites. And it might not have been on my topic. Of course, you know, I mean, my I'm just sharing. I may talk about blogging and social media and, uh, you know, things along that, that ilk, writing most of the time. But I've been known to deviate here and there. But if I ask someone to write a guest post on a certain thing, I expect them to link back to their site. I don't care, really, if the search engine doesn't like it. But to date, search, the search engines have not been mad at that stuff. So that's false. And here's the last one I'm going to give you. If there are too many links back to my site, Google's going to think it's my fault, so I've got to take care of it. Now, that's false, but here's the thing. If you are one of those link farms, and that's what I'm calling them, who goes out and looks to put links everywhere from one source, yeah, those are, those are the people they were penalizing. But you know what? My business blog, Mitch's blog, and I've talked about that you know, in a couple of other videos this month. Back when I first created my website, and I talk about leadership and diversity, for whatever reason, the term diversity seemed to be very popular with those, uh, what do we call them? Oh my God, I can't remember what you call them now. But you know, the, the search sites where you could go on and, oh, geez, what did we call those things? <laughs> it's been so long since I talked about it, I don't know. Anyway, if you went and you put in my business name and you put in diversity, you're going to find that I'm probably on six or 7,000 sites that I never appealed to. I never sent anything to those sites asking them to link me. But they did because they found that we're diversity, they linked me. Maybe back in 2002, 2003, diversity was a very new term. So they just said, hey, let's get this guy because he talks about diversity. But I'm on all these sites. I'm still on tons of sites. So now it's supposed to be me who contacts all of these sites and say, oh, please remove me from your direct directories. That's what they were called. Lord, I knew I would think of it. Anyway, it's supposed to be me to go to all these sites and remove it. Ain't going to happen. You know, I don't think that search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, I don't think they're so dumb that they think that I went out and asked six or 7,000 different websites to add my link to them. 
and you just can't do it. That's just almost impossible. I'm saying almost impossible because I'm sure if it's a major company, maybe you know a company with four or five thousand employees or something like that, they'd be able to do it. But you know what? It's just me. <laughs> it just can't happen. So if all those other links are out there, that's not on me. If a lot of bloggers like an article that I wrote and they started adding it to their sites, that's not on me. They added it. I didn't ask them, but I'm going to accept the link as long as it's in context with what they've written and it comes back to my site. Great. That's actually a good thing. I do that all the time. I see certain articles here and there. I link back to people. That's, to me, that's a better way of giving back to someone else. You're not really expecting anything back. Sometimes you get it, but that's the way to do it. So if it's a blanket thing, then it's a lie. And that's the whole thing about SEO. There are certain things that are legitimate for everybody. You know, hidden links and hidden keywords kind of thing. You know, sneaky things that they call black hat SEO. There's things that those folks do. Yeah, that will get you penalized. But these things that I've mentioned, these four things, and trust me, there's probably a hundred things that I could have brought up, but then we'd be here all day long. If you've done any of these, you're okay. That's all I'm going to tell you. You're okay. You've been given bad SEO advice. And if anyone else doesn't believe me, bring it on. We can have that as a conversation. Be nice. <laughs> Make sure you're nice, but we can have that conversation. Anyway, that's what I have. I already told you my name. You see all my links below. Let me know your thoughts. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful day.